In this tutorial, we'll see how to create a read more button with only CSS and no JavaScript. All right, so we're quickly gonna code up an example here. So it's currently empty. And the first thing I actually wanna add is the font that we're gonna use, which is the Roboto font. So you can click on here if you're coding along with me, you can pick the font weights that you want. Let's say we want uh, 400, 500, and 700. And you have to click on this icon and it will show you how to include that in your HTML. I only have to copy this and I'll paste that right here. I'm gonna format this by holding Shift Alt F. I'm gonna save this and refresh. We don't have anything yet. That's okay because now we're gonna add the actual card, you could say, to the HTML. So I'm gonna say dot card to create a div. Now in here, we're gonna have um, an, a heading H2. And this will just say hello everyone. And then just uh, some text here. I'm gonna add some lorem text here, let's say 15 words. And then we have the actual content that will be hidden initially. Right, so I'm gonna create a div for that with a class of content. So in there we could have another div with let's say, uh, and then we will also have a button in here that will say view less because once it's open, we also wanna be able to close it again. So we're gonna have um, actually, before we do that, let me explain to you what we're going to do, because we're sort of going to create a click event or we're going to simulate a click event in CSS. Typically, you would use JavaScript for that, but here we're going to do this with only CSS. And the way that these type of things work, work is with the so-called checkbox hack. So you can have a checkbox here at the top and we'll say type is checkbox, right? So it's, a, it's just a checkbox and then you can have a label for that input. So we can say label. I'm going to do that at the bottom here and it needs to know for which input that's it, this is so i'm going to give this an id I'm, i'll call that ch you can call whatever you want but then you do need to make sure you match you match the correct um, id here right so this label is for that input and this is going to be the read more button we're going to style this label like a button and then we're also going to have a button in here which is going to be show less right so now when i refresh it's going to look like garbage because we haven't styled any, uh, anything here but we do have this checkbox, right? And you can check a checkbox and you can uncheck it. Now you can do that by clicking on the checkbox itself, but the trick is that you can also do that by clicking on the label. So this read more is a label. Now if you click on that, you can see the checkbox gets checked. If I click again on it, it gets unchecked. Same goes for the other one. So this is sort of a hack in CSS that you can use to sort of simulate a uh, click event in JavaScript. All right, so now we're gonna style this. So I'm gonna, right, so I have linked to my style sheet here. Now I'm first gonna start off with a CSS reset because the browser adds some default styling and we don't want that we want to start from a clean slate so i'm selecting all elements here with the universal selector i'm removing all margin all padding and typically people also set the box size and property to border box this is a bit advanced i have a separate video on that definitely check it out it's the most difficult property in css so then we're going to set the font family right to roboto that's the font that we just imported if roboto is not available for whatever reason pick any sans serif font we're going to set the background color. I found a greenish color that looks pretty good, I think. And let's see, we're going to we're going to center everything as well. So let's see what we have so far. OK, that looks slightly better. Um, let's actually start off with the cards here before we continue with anything else. So that card is going to have a background color of, let's say, white. I'm going to refresh here and let me actually make this a little bit uh, uh, more narrow so you can see what's going on. And I'm actually going to put everything on a live server so I don't have to keep refreshing everything. I'm using the live server extension in Visual Studio Code. Um, you can go here, you can download this extension and then you can right click open with live server. So you don't have to keep refreshing any, every time you make a change. So I'm, I've copied that URL that, that it has given me. I'm going to zoom a little bit and then I can keep styling here without the constant refreshing that I have to do. Right, so I'm going to give this a width of 400 pixels, a padding of 22 pixels on top and bottom, 30 pixels on the right and left side, border radius of 5 pixels, a line height of 1.8, whoops, line height, 1.8, and let's see, that's it for the card for now. Now we're going to center this on the page. So I'm going to use Flexbox for that, right? So it's really important that you have mastered Flexbox if you want to be a web developer, especially on the front end. I have a course on CSS. Flexbox is a big part of that. So definitely check it out if you want to take it to a professional level. The link is in the description. So we're going to use Flexbox here. So we're going to say display flex. And then to center it horizontally, we can use justify content center. That's for the horizontal axis here. And then we don't want it to sit against the top there. So we're going to say padding top 200 pixels. So then we're going to remove this um, checkbox here. 
which we have given an ID of CH, right? So we can select it here in the CSS with this hashtag because it's a, it's an it's an ID. We don't want to see the checkbox. We're just going to use it as sort of um, a hack to simulate a click event. And then we're also going to style these labels like actual buttons. So we can just select them by, by their tag names. And we're going to make them inline block level elements because we're going to add padding on top and bottom um, and margin on the top. And that will not work uh, out, of, out of the box because these labels are inline by default. So we're going to say cursor should be pointer because it should it should look like you can actually click on it. The color should be the color of the text should be white. Background color should be um, a, bit, a bit a bit of a darker green so that it matches with the background of the page. So we say 72, 113, 97. And let me actually just move this a little bit more this side so you can see it all. I'm gonna save here. All right. I'm gonna add some padding. Three pixels on top and bottom. 13 pixels on the right and left side. Border radius. Three pixels. And I'm gonna add some margin on the top of 12 pixels. All right, that's it for the button. You can see when I hover it with my mouse, you can you get that um, different cursor. All right, so this is all the content that we have. Now what we want is that initially only this is visible. So I'll make, I'll make this a little bit more interesting looking with these dots. So you can see here, this content then is what we want to hide initially. The content also has that show less button, right? So this content, we need to select that. Um, let's see, I'll just add that here. This initially should be hidden, right? Or, you know, it should not be displayed. So we're going to say display none, right? So this content has that paragraph text and also this show less button. We don't see that right now. It's hidden, right? We do have, we still have the read more uh, label here. And now the trick is, if you remember, if you click on this, it will check the checkbox, right? And if you click on it again, it unchecks it. Now the cool thing is in CSS, you can do something when the checkbox gets checked. So what you can do here is you can select, you can select the checkbox and we can say in the checked state. When the checkbox is checked, select the content, right? With the, the sibling selector, right? So this um, checkbox is a, is a sibling of this content div. Not a direct sibling, but still it's on the same level. So you can select it like that. So when it is checked, the display should not be none of this content, but block. And that's how it's going to work. So now if you do this, it's going to show um, that uh, content div. And if you click on it again, it's going to become unchecked, right? So then it will be display none again. Now, also what we need to do is we need to hide this button, right? So when it's checked, the sibling, this sibling label should also be hidden, right? So that's not going to be this one. This is not a sibling. It's, it's sitting in, this is the sibling and then a child element of that, right? So that's not a sibling. So we can also use the sibling selector to do that. So we can say CH in the checked state again, and then select the label. That's the sibling. And this one should be hidden because we don't want to see the read more button uh, when it's open, All right? So now when I click on this, you can see that that um, show more button or read more button is gone. And now we just have to show less button and the actual content here, right? Now, remember, this is also a label, right? And a label, as long as, it's, as long as it's connected properly with the four attributes, right, this ID, if I click on this again, it will uncheck the checkbox, right? So if I click on this again, it will uncheck the checkbox and it will hide everything again because that's what the, that's what we say here, right? So this is how you can um, get a uh, read more button with only CSS. We're sort of simulating a click event with JavaScript by using that checkbox hack, right? So definitely make sure you have mastered CSS. I have a whole course on that. Definitely check it out. The links in the description. It's really important that as a front end developer that you know the ins and outs of uh, CSS that includes a flexbox, CSS grid, animations and transitions and much more. So check it out. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.